What is up guys? This video is all about implementing object detection and object tracking using Ultralytics based YOLO V10 or V11 and deep sort. In the first part of this video, we will understand the concept of object detection and tracking. Now, this part won't be big, just a basic understanding of what is object detection and tracking. In fact, if you know what these two things are, you might as well just skip and go to the implementation part. On the implementation side, in part two, we will implement both object detection and tracking in Python. We will use two videos to show the results of our implementation in Python. And these are the two videos. What you see right now is the final result of our implementation. And of course, when we implement, we will see all of this again. All my code will be on my GitHub repo and the link will be in the description below. Now, let's quickly spend a minute or two understanding what is object detection and tracking. I think most of you know that object detection is literally object classification and localization in the image. We will use deep learning for this, of course, using YOLO. When you feed YOLO in an image, it'll give you the bounding boxes either in X, Y with height format, where X and Y is the centroid, or the other option is getting X min, Y min, X max, Y max. Now, if you don't know enough about this, I'd recommend looking at the internet to understand how object detection works. I don't want to cover that in this video because this video is more about implementation. Now, object tracking is tracking different objects over time. For people who don't know what object tracking is, there's always an obvious question when you start understanding object tracking. If you have an object detector, it hopefully detects the object in every frame, hopefully in the ideal world, of course, then why do you need tracking? Well, assuming that your object detector detects the object in every frame, the object might be occluded and you don't want to lose track of that object because the whole idea of object tracking is to know that this is the object that was present in the previous frame at whatever position. So you want to maintain the idea of the object. So let's say you're tracking a pen. If this pen moves forward in time, you want to know that this is the same pen. So you assign or the tracker assigns it an ID. And when it moves forward, the same ID remains. But if you have two pens, you also need to understand that this is pen one, this is pen two. That's what the tracker does. Now, what happens when this pen gets occluded by, let's say this, a charger, and then the object detector doesn't detect the pen anymore. So let's say for the next 10 frames, the object detector doesn't detect this pen, and then the pen is visible again. In that case, an object tracker maintains this in its memory based on how we configure it so that once the object is visible again, the same ID is assigned to it. So you know that it is the same object. That is done using a Kalman filter. So almost all detectors these days use Kalman filter to do all of this. If you don't know what a Kalman filter is, please check out my video series here on Kalman filter, where you will understand the intuitive idea behind a Kalman filter, then the mathematical concepts, and in the end, you will build a Kalman filter in Python. But if you understand what a Kalman filter is, I think this is quite evident to you now. Now, the second problem is, let's say occlusion is solved using a Kalman filter, but what if objects start crossing each other? For instance, let's look at these pens again. If these pens cross each other, what happens? They might interchange their IDs or specifically the tracker might get confused and say that initially this was ID one, this was ID two, but later on this becomes ID one and this becomes ID two. For that, a tracker can also use embeddings. And one of the most famous trackers for this is DeepSort that uses the Kalman filter under the hood, but also uses embeddings. By embeddings, what I mean is it looks at the bounding box around this object and then it makes a descriptor of sorts out of it to understand the visual properties. And when these objects still cross each other, the tracker compares the visual properties as well so that it still knows that this object is ID1, this one is ID2 because it looks like an object which had the ID1 before. So in essence, a tracker uses a Kalman filter to solve for occlusion and let's say lack of bounding boxes if your object detector is not ideal and most object detectors are not ideal, you will miss a frame or two here and there. And second, deep sort can use embeddings to understand the visual properties of an object, store it in its memory, and then over time also compare the object to the visual representation it has in its memory. So this is a basic idea of object detection and object tracking. Now that we've covered this, let's move to implementation because that is the core of this video. In this part of the video, we use Ultralytics based YOLO V10N or V11 and DeepSort. To keep the video short, I will show you the results of only YOLO V10N or M on the videos. But the exact same code base works with YOLO V11. The only thing that you need to do is change the path of your PyTorch file. So you can download any model, YOLO V10N, YOLO V10M, YOLO V11N, MS. And if you change the path of the model, 
the same code base will work. DeepSort is an open source library that you can use and we will do the same. We will use two of these videos to see the results of our implementation. In the first one, you will just have one person moving a little bit and you will see that the ID is still there around the bounding box. The bounding box is given by the object detector and the ID is given by the tracker. In the second video, you have multi-object tracking or specifically multi-person tracking in this case, where you will have a football field and players are moving around and playing and the object detector plus tracker combination will track people over time. You will also see how it works you will see the IDs being retained and you will also see some problems which will lead to a conversation about tuning. So let's begin implementing object detection and tracking in Python. Okay, so here we are in our Python setup. I have implemented everything and all this code is on GitHub and we will look at the code line by line. And if you see, I have my videos inside my asset directory and that is the path I'm gonna give to our implementation. Before we start implementing, we also need to download PyTorch models. I have downloaded these. We will use YOLO v10n or m or YOLO v11. You can choose whatever model you want. All you need to do is give the right PyTorch file to it. You can download the right PyTorch file from Ultralytics website. Now, before we start, I am in a virtual environment where I will install everything. I have my requirements.txt file where I will use OpenCV Python, Ultralytics and DeepSort real time. Now here, I'm already in my virtual environment. I have already activated it. If you're not using a virtual environment, I highly recommend doing it instead of using your base environment for Python because you don't want to disturb your base environment. For that, you can just be in your base project directory and then you can run this command. If you have virtual and en installed, you can set up your virtual environment here. If you don't know more about virtual environment, you can check out any video or any sources on the internet. I already have mine here and to activate it, do the following. This is how you activate your virtual environment. Now that you're in your virtual environment, you need to install all these dependencies. This is how you install all your requirements. I already have all of them, but if you run this, you will get all the dependencies. Now let's start looking at our code base. So what we've done up until now is get our assets in our assets directory, namely the two videos we want. We got our PyTorch models in our models directory. Now let's look at the code base to start implementing everything. This is your base file, which has your main function. These are your imports. You import CV2 to get each frame from your video and also to display everything. You import time because you will log the time and display your FPS. You import YOLO detector class from the file YOLO detector, which we will create in a bit. But in general, this is where your detector class sits. And then you import your tracker class from the file tracker. This is again something we implement. And under the hood, this will have deep sort tracker. These are your paths, model path and video path. I will change this to N for now. And then we have your video path. We start with person.mp4 where one person is just sitting and moving a little bit. And then we will go to our football example as well. Now, if you go down all the way, this is just you calling your main function. Let's go back up. This is your main function. Here you create your YOLO detector. We will go into the details in a bit, but right now just take it as a placeholder. You have your YOLO detector with your model path. And if we want to give YOLO v10n.pytorch file, the confidence is 0.2. So that is the confidence threshold that the model will consider to give out bounding boxes. Second one is your tracker. So we will implement the tracker as well. Now this part is just to start capturing your frames from your video. If of course you can't open the file, then it just says unable to open video file. Now this is where your loop is to process each frame. This is where you get your frame. If you can't get your frame, which means that no frames are left to process, then you break out of this loop and you're done with the code. This is just to log the start time for each frame because we will show the FPS later. Right now we are just using detector and tracker as a placeholder before we go into the details of how detector and tracker are implemented. So what we're doing is giving this frame to the detector and detector gives out the detection. So YOLO bounding boxes. Once you have your detections, you send these detections and the frame to your tracker. Now remember that this is a deep sort tracker under the hood, which we will implement. So it needs your detections used by the Kalman filter and also the frame to get the embeddings of different objects in the frame. So that's what we do. And it gives back tracking IDs and boxes. So each box has the corresponding tracking ID. This is you drawing the bounding box and writing your tracking ID on the frame to display. This is the end time, which marks the time where the processing of that particular frame was done. And then you calculate the FPS. You print the FPS here. And this is where you show the final frame with bounding boxes and the tracking ID. This is obvious. If you press Q or escape, the processing stops. And this is where you release your capture and you destroy all the windows. Okay, now the skeleton is done. Let's go to the actual implementation of your detector and tracker. Let's look at the detector first. 
In your detector file, you import YOLO from Ultralytics. Now we implement a class YOLO detector. This is just your init method where you take the model path and you get the model, the actual model out of the model path. On line six, you use that model path, give it to YOLO, which is provided by Ultralytics as a class, and then you get your model. Then you have your class list. In your class list, right now I've written only person, which means that we are only interested in the bounding box that has the label person. You can have a multi-class system, that's fine. It's just that in this example, we are only interested in person as a class. You save your confidence threshold that will be used by the model for each frame. Now this is your detect method that gives the frame to the model, the YOLO model, and then gets the results out of it. And then from the results, it extracts detections. So the first two lines is to send the image to the model with the confidence threshold, and then you get the results back. You can look at the data structure and play around with it, but this is how you do it. The variable results can have multiple results. So you can actually give multiple images. Right now we are giving one image. That's why we use index zero to get the result of the first image. Now we also need to process that result. Your result is a data structure and it has boxes, confidence and so on and so forth that we need to extract from it. So that's why we create a method. Once this method is created, it gives you back the final detection. So the right data structure you need for further processing and then we return detections. But let's look at make detections now. Make detections takes in the result from your YOLO model. And if you read, this is just us processing that data structure. So that data structure result has boxes. For each box, we get X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And from that we create X, Y, width and height. Remember that x1, y1 is the top left and x2, y2 bottom right. Instead of giving centroid and width height, what we actually need is x1, y1 and width height. That is required by the tracker and that's why we create this data structure. Here we check if the name of the class is in our list of interests and then we get the confidence and create the final detection and that detection is appended. Now after each box is processed, you return the detections. So that's it about your detector. Let's look at tracker. In tracker, you start from importing deep sort from deep sort real time. This is the class tracker. This is your init method. Here you create your object tracker, which is for deep sort. Now here you have various parameters. The first one is max age. That is the maximum number of missed misses before a track is deleted. The next one is n underscore init, which is the number of frames that a track remains in initialization phase. That defaults to three. NMS max overlap is non-maxima suppression threshold. You can play around with this as well. Max cosine distance is getting threshold for your cosine distance. NN budget is maximum size of the appearance descriptor, how big that descriptor is for embeddings. If none, no budget is enforced. Override track class, giving this will override default track class, but we don't want to do that, so we don't. Embedder is the mobile net. You can have different kinds of embedders. We are using mobile net here, but you can also use other kinds of embedders like Torch DID, Clip, RN50, and so on and so forth. Half is for your embedder again. It tells you whether to use half precision for deep embedder. That is applicable only for mobile net. BGR tells where the frame given to the embedder is expected to be BGR. Embedder model name is only used when the embedder is torch DID, otherwise this is not useful. Embedder weights is optional specification of path to embedder's model weight. Polygon tells you whether detections are polygons. Today as an argument provides today's date for naming of tracks. We don't need that, we don't want that, so let's not use that. Okay, so we are done with the initialization. Now we just have a method track, which tracks your detections using the detections you get from your bounding boxes and the frame. Here you get your final tracks. They have your track IDs and they also give you the corresponding bounding boxes. Now for each track, you get the tracking IDs. So you append tracking ID to your list, tracking underscore IDs. So you also need to get the right box in your boxes list. What you can do here is you can use two underscore LTRB, which is left top, right bottom. So that's X min, Y min, X max, Y max. And then you can append to your list boxes. And this is where you return your tracking IDs and boxes. So this was just the implementation of your tracker, which is again, short and sweet. And implementation wise, that's honestly about it. If you go back to YOLO detection underscore tracking dot pi, you use all of what I've shown you right now. And what you can do now is run this. Let's start with running this on our person dot MP4 file, which is just one person sitting and moving a little and see what happens. Let's run this. Now here you see that I am detected and also tracked. If I move here and there, you will still see the ID one moving along with the bounding box. Right, so this is an easy example. It's just one person and the person is moving. Now let's look at multi-object tracking. For that, let's change the source of our video. This file football.mp4 is also on my GitHub repo, so you can just use that mp4 file as well. Let's run this again. Now here you see that the model is detecting, but it's not really detecting all people well. 
So what we can do is we can change this to M model. Although we started with N model, let's first change this to M model and then see everything again. You can also run the same thing on YOLO V11. But remember that when it comes to tuning, YOLO V11 might lead to a different behavior. So we will talk about tuning in a bit, but when you're using different models, the behavior changes a little bit and you will have to tune according to the model itself. But the entire code base is applicable to YOLO V10, YOLO V11. As long as you're using the Ultralytics library, you can run any YOLO V10 model or any YOLO V11 model from Ultralytics. Now this looks slightly better, right? Let's see what happens here. You see that the people are being tracked. People on the sides are not being tracked that well. That is a property of the model itself. So now you see that the people on the side are also being tracked. But if you look at 4, 2 and 14, these are players in their red jerseys. 14 is now going to cross over, but it will still retain the ID. And that is a great thing. So the tracker is using the Kalman filter, but also the embedding. There are times when two people cross over and you will see 14 doing this again and again. I'll quickly forward this a little bit. Now you see that 10 is actually very close to 14, but he will still retain the ID. Right, so 14 is still there. The same thing with 4. 4 will retain the ID even though it has 15, 12 and 3. So 12, 4, 14, they've retained their ID. So this is our implementation of object detection plus object tracking. So you see that it is working. Now, remember that I have fine tuned this a little bit, not too much, but a little bit to adjust to this current frame. But this still has some problems. So this implementation is again not perfect because ideally everything would work well, but you always have problems with tracking and detection at some point in time, like nothing is absolutely perfect. So what you can do is you can tune this a little bit more. Let me show you one problem here. Here, first you see that 16 didn't appear immediately. So that was the object detector itself. If you use a bigger detector or if you train this, fine tune this model a little bit, it might work. You also see that 18 right now exists, but you will see some problems there. So you see you have 20 and 18. Now here you can play with the detector. You can play with the IOU threshold, or this can also be because of the Kalman filter tuning. So you can also play with how many images or how many uh, bounding boxes you need before the ID is removed. So my point is multiple things are at play and you have to try playing around in general to see what works well. And if you move from one kind of input to the other, let's say from football to something very different, then the results will change. Remember that the model we are using is a pre-trained model and we have not fine-tuned it as well. So that is again a factor. But anyway, this is the implementation of YOLO using Ultralytics and DeepSort for object detection and object tracking. I hope this video was useful to you and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye and have a great day.